Hello, everyone. This is Domingo with Welcome Home Podcast. We hope that this podcast encourages you to fall in love with Jesus more. Enjoy this next episode. Uh. Hey, guys. What up? Hey, Kevin. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. So what was the question? There was a question before this uh, this recording started that John uh, asked or Domingo asked. What was the question? What to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what to talk about. What the heck? I said that um, I'll get like things, things will pop into my head that like, oh yeah, that'd be cool to talk about. Um, oh yeah. Mm. And then like we get to this point where we're like sitting down and actually like I'm ready to, to talk. But, and then like, I can't think of any of those things anymore. Yeah. They just, and then I just said, well, maybe that's the Lord. <laughs> oh. Keeping me. Yeah. Keeping me from talking about things that maybe I don't really need to talk about. Uh, well, what happens maybe. to me whenever we find like games that have to do with naming things or naming foods or whatever, everything just goes out the window. Exactly. So mm. I think it's a human thing. It's all good. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. That's pretty, I mean, <laughs> pretty there. So, um, okay. Uh, I actually have something to talk about. Um, this morning I sent, a, um, I sent a video. Uh, we have a little group Shh. chat for, uh, for the, the podcast. And I guess like, like in the video that it was, um, I guess, I think it was in Australia. Um, but the recording was just this guy and he came up to this girl who, um, was on the streets and he came up to her and yeah, I guess he's just like recording a video, but he like kind of hit the camera, but he came up to her and he said, what, what do you want? Like, do you want this alcohol? Do you want this food or do you want this money? And I've seen this, I saw this earlier. Yeah, and she just said, "Like, I just want to talk to somebody or something like that." You sent this in the chat, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. There was basically it's just her kind of explaining it a little bit, but she, I mean, it obviously kind of looks like something's like going on with her, like mentally. But I don't know. I mean, it could just be like depression or something um understandably but she said a line that i like i texted i texted it in the group chat and it really like hit deep um but she said it would be nice to feel like i exist um because she said that she would ask or just try to talk to somebody and people would walk by and just be like i don't have any money i don't have any money nobody want to give her like the time of day um and for this is actually something I started noticing the moment I started thinking about this. But I've been noticing people for some reason like more today. Like there's mm-hmm. ever since I watched that in the morning, I feel like I've been going to coffee shops. Um, and even at the laundry mat, I saw like like two or three other like there's like other like women that were there. Um, and then I went to uh, the coffee shop here in town, White Rabbit. I went there and then there was like this person sitting down alone, like to to my right, actually. And I kind of just saw them with my uh, peripheral vision, but I just kept seeing, I've been noticing these people. And for some reason, I just have this like, like care, um, which I usually don't have, but I feel like today it's just kind of highlighted that there's so many people out there that we know that may have like depression and like mental, just mental illness, like hard struggles. Yeah. And I know as, as so many of us as Christians, we have people to talk about uh, these things. We have people to talk these things out with, but like, I remember like there's so many days when like, when I really wasn't, like what 
studied or like really into like Christian things. When I would talk to my friends growing up when I wasn't a Christian and they would ask me things and I didn't really have any good answers to give them besides like, oh, just maybe like go drink or go do something and like temporary, temporary feeling. Temporary, yeah. Yeah. Like temporary things. And I feel like that's just been hi highlighted today that I've just been noticing people like extra, like kind of really going through things um, alone because people have like people have like a look sometimes. Um, I feel like depression and anxiety have like a look um and mm -hmm. you can kind of you can kind of just tell by the way like if you were to go somewhere and you just maybe obviously not i don't want to assume i guess um but there's a lot of times when it really is very visual like people just look like they just don't care about anything sometimes other times i i mean i've had friends that are depressed and they look perfectly fine but mm -hmm. i guess what i want to say is like there's so many people out there that struggle with mental issues and it's just been really highlighted today. And I don't know, I think it'd be like cool to maybe one day um, be more bold, like I, I guess like on, on my part and be able to walk up to these people and like obviously not just be like a robot and just just be like, hey, like Jesus loves you, but maybe come up to him and just be like, hey, like what's your name? Mm -hmm. Like where are you from? What do you like doing? And obviously when you're going through stuff, you don't really want to talk to people. I remember when I, so many times I've been depressed, people are like, what's your name? And I'm like, uh, Kev, you know, like you don't want to talk to people, but like it's, it actually does affect people when you, go up to somebody and you show them that you care when you come up to somebody and you just you just don't leave you just kind of are just chilling you're just kind of like hey like i'm not talking to you because i don't care like most people in society nowadays like talk to people because they want something they want to better their careers they want to like do something they kind of just want to use you um mm. and it's it's so beautiful how there's in in healthy christian communities there's like there's people that actually care about you for you Mm -hmm. and they see they see you <clears throat> and they see god in you yeah and like it i don't know i just seeing those people today i was just kind of like man i just want to ask you your name i just want to like learn more about you um like that girl in the video like i just have this like urge to just be like man like god is here for you god loves you and i just want to go over there and just help the person in that video like find a community and like a healthy community people that can actually help build her up and not tear her down like so many other like communities do um but yeah i just kind of want a tangent just about seeing people and sharing the hope that we have with them mm -hmm. kevin what do you think keeps you from or anybody from going up to people in those types of situations and talking to them? Well, um, I think the first thing is like, let's just say this. When you are so comfortable in your Christian walk, sometimes I feel like you come up to somebody or no, you're afraid to come up to somebody because they might want more from you than what you want to give. Um, yeah, that's, real. that's real. And like sometimes, and I, I'm I'm guilty of this. Too. I'm not gonna blame other people. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm gonna use myself as an as an example. Um, you see somebody on the street that's asking for a dollar. I could very well get out of the car and talk with them, get to know them, even though they're homeless. But like, there's that part of me that's like, I don't want to get out of the car right now. Like I don't want to give that person like my time right now. Like I'm too busy. Like I have to go do other stuff. There's those days when I'm actually, I could spare like just 10 minutes to just learn this person's name. Maybe be like, hey, do you want something from Starbucks? I can bring you something. Like treat somebody like they exist. And I'm not saying you have to like become a superhero and save the world. And it doesn't have to necessarily even be a homeless person. It can be like a friend, you know, mm -hmm. but like they're even like a friend that you haven't really talked to in a while, but they might be struggling. And I feel like sometimes you're just like, man, I don't really want to 
talk to that person because I feel like they might just take more of my time. And I feel like I'm in a good headspace. I need to protect this. You know, um, I, we actually kind of hit on this, I think, on the pilot episode, I think, um, where we all have a have a cup that we need to fill with like with Jesus. Like when we come to Jesus, when we spend time with the Lord, he fills us. And he's the one that's he's the one that's feeding us. We're, we're not the ones whenever we go and talk to people, we're not the ones giving of our own because anything that comes from us is I mean, we can't do anything good without Jesus, you know. Um, but if we can lead somebody to the water source, you know, like the whole thing, like give a man a fish, you give him food for a day, teach a man how to fish and you give him food for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you're able to like. Share somebody, share with somebody like like that. Like the message of Jesus, the love of Jesus, it's so cool. Like you're setting that person up for success. Um, I mean, that's kind of our calling too as Christians, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to that thing, I guess that's what stops me. Is like I just have those moments where I'm like, you know what? I'm in a good, I'm in a good spot mentally. Like I feel like I don't need to go to that person. Um, God will provide the right person to go and speak to them, and maybe the Lord might actually say if we were to actually ask him in that moment well you're right here did you go talk to that person and that, i guess that's kind of a conviction i'm actually feeling right now <laughs> as i'm saying that so yeah yeah something for me uh I, you know I, I approach things uh with my mind you know reasoning it out and logic and things like that to a fault right at times mm-hmm. Um, but when I look at somebody uh, who is homeless or on a street corner or whatever the case may be, I'm I'm looking at them and I'm saying, okay, is this just somebody who's struggling? You know, are they new to to this, and they're just having a hard time? They really just do need some cash or money or or a meal or whatever, or is this somebody who's making a living out of this because mm. there are those people who are, you know, panhandlers who are the same spot every day, you know, and they live in a tent somewhere down the road or whatever. Right. Um, or is this somebody who is, you know, does have some drug related issues because all of those people might react and respond to me in a different way, you know, um, I might be a little bit more hesitant to go up to somebody who's, you know, tweaking out because they're unpredictable. They could be unpredictable. I might not know what they're, how they're going to respond or what they may or may not do to me. Mm. Um, so I'm like, I'm processing all these things when I see somebody in need. Um, I know here in our town, we have regularly people that are on certain street corners yeah. every day um, with a cardboard sign or whatnot. So you know, how we, uh, for me, how I approach those people is kind of like based on my observation. Um, and, and yes, you know, if I feel led to a lot of times I'll ask somebody if they're at a grocery store near a grocery store and I'm going to the grocery store, I'll ask them, Hey, uh, you know, is there anything I get you, you know, anything you need that I can get at the store right here? Cause I'm less likely to give people money. That's just my personal approach to it. Uh, I'm more likely to get them something tangible like food or, you know, a meal, fast food meal or whatever. Um, But, yeah, I was just curious, you know, what, you know, like I asked you originally, like what keeps you from doing that and how you kind of process that. Um, So, yeah. What about you, Domingo? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, a ton. Uh, Well, I mean, if we're going down the road of, Homelessness. My it would mom. be both, uh, not just yeah. Say friends and homelessness. Sure. Okay. Uh, the one that I relate to the most um, would be homelessness because, well, I mean, my mom, she was homeless, and I think she might be right now, homeless for like forty plus years of her life, mm. and. You know, we'd come, like I even said this, I think earlier episodes, we would come home 
from me from school and I would be, my grandma would be waiting for me in the car and we'd go and find her somewhere like in Bellingham. Um, done, not necessarily the wisest thing in giving her money, but like we would also take her out to eat, uh, get her clothes, that kind of stuff. Um, give her her EBT card so she can get food, stuff like that. And, uh, and I think one of the things that stops me from giving people that are experiencing homelessness money uh, is the experience that I have with my mom. Just like in general, she would be money hungry all the time. Like, and if we didn't have money, then she wouldn't necessarily be there to see us, you know? Uh, and like my experiences with going to the Union Gospel Mission with my school, this internship that I did, to get an outreach program. And the one, the guy that was in charge of it, that's been doing it for years, like said, like, don't ever give money to people that are experiencing homelessness because they're just going to use it on the stuff that got them to that position. So it's like you kind of are like giving them the the open door to like, yeah, you can continue doing this. Like, yeah, I'll provide for this. Like, so on in that sense, like I'm against giving people, giving people that are experiencing homelessness money. I will give them food for sure and like give them clothes and like we'll do that kind of stuff. But when it comes to money, like that's just kind of out of the question. Um, I would expect someone for me to do that to me too. If I was on the corner, like I wouldn't expect money. I would expect food though, for sure. Um, you know, and so, uh, another thing is just like the trauma behind what I've experienced with my mom, like being on the streets and that kind of stuff, thinking about, you know, that's what they're going through. And what helped my mom get deeper into it was, uh, people just kind of helping her out all the time, like giving her that comfort of people are always going to be there to help you. And I think that's like an unrealistic ex expectation when you're in that position, because you, you, one, you do not know what that person's doing all the time, right? You want to assume the greatest thing. Like you want to be able to say like, they're trying to get their life around, but being in this cycle years after years after years of mom going into jail, going, going to prison, getting, being out on the streets, finding somebody that she likes there, you know, and trying to work things out. Oh, it didn't work out. And then just years of that. So it was, it was like a very much, uh, eye-opening experience, um, to be able to say, you know, and, and acknowledge that I don't know what this person is going through. And if I'm going to help them, I'm going to help them get into a, a rehab place or a shelter or somewhere that's going to line them up to be able to either get a job or get cleaner so then they can make those better decisions. Um, and so, but like I said, the trauma stops me from that. Cause I'm like, um, I just walls everywhere. There's not, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. That's like bringing back so much of my emotions and like, and seeing them and maybe they're high or whatever, that's going to bring back like my memories and and so I like I tend to wave at them make eye contact that kind of stuff but I'll, I'll like rarely roll down the window give them money if they if they're if I have food with me I'll give them food but like yeah that kind of stuff and so that's kind of keeping me from having that interaction for sure praying for them as I drive by as well I need to do more of that that's convicting um it's just simple like Jesus knows them Jesus sees them in their position, in the deep depths of where they're at. And so being able to pray for them is something that I could be doing more of. Um, and friends is a whole different thing. I, I won't get into that, but yeah. Well, maybe we do. I don't know. Let's, yeah, I'm down. Kevin, like what, can you expound on that? Like, what do you mean? Like, what was your original um, heart when you had mentioned that about friends and like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I would say that um, just people in general. I, I, okay. I kind of just I guess like the homeless part stuck stuck out yeah. because I mean the video was about yeah. um, a homeless girl, but I was I feel like the line that I was mentioning earlier that really hit me. Then that's what I want to talk about is when she said, "I kind of just want to feel like I exist." Right. And. Um, 
there's a lot of people, homeless, friends, family, maybe the person even in the same room as you, that are really struggling. And um, I guess, like, for me, the thing that, like, really made it um, real or that has made it real is, and I mean, this is, like, more, like, sensitive topic for people that are, like, um, I guess sensitive to, like, death. Um, I would say, like, there's been a lot of kids in this area that I grew up with. Um, I would say, like, for, like, a, a, a better word, I would say unalived themselves. Um, like, actually quite a, a few people actually maybe more than five people that i know or six mm. um that i grew up with knowing um i mean i'm, I'm 25 um and so like when i said like those five or six was people that are like i guess closer like i knew them by name spoke to them then anybody else would be like outside of that <laughs> but i guess just that yeah like just having lost friends to like mental battles going through things is really the reason why um, I brought that up again. Because the lady said in the video, like, I just want to feel like, like I'm alive. I just I want to, I want to, I want people to like notice me. I want people to like to treat me like I'm an actual person and not just like something. Yeah. And sometimes um, people that are really going through that may have lost sense of like, what's my purpose? Yeah. Like, what's the point? Why am I here? And that's kind of the real thing I wanted to hit on. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just about like homeless and friends or whatever. I'm, it can be anybody. I was just saying like, uh, Domingo, who just came back. Um, it could be people like next to you or in the room that are struggling with like mental stuff that um, really need that. And maybe like what's stopping us from going over to like somebody and like speaking life into them. Like I said earlier, sometimes we... Some, I mean, there's some friends, they're not homeless, but there's some friends that I have this kind of the one that I was thinking about where it's like, there, there's a lot of friends that I have that I'm like, again, it's on me. Like, I don't, in my head, I'm like, I feel like I'm doing fine. I know that person, they're a great person, but I feel like if I go and speak to them, like it may, they're probably going to want something more from me that I want to give. Um, they're going to want more of my time that like I want to save. And I don't really want to like offer that up right now. Um, but maybe that's because we're just thinking about ourselves. Maybe that person is really going through it and they may just need somebody to talk to. And I think if, if the Lord was standing right next to you and he said, can you go speak to that person? That's my, that's my child. Then you said, you know what, Lord, like, I know you love that person and we're kind of, we're kind of friends, but. If I go and talk to them, they're going to want more from me that I want to give. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Lord would say, I gave more than anyone. Mm -hmm. He gave his son. And I feel like I would probably just be like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, I feel like I don't have any excuse that can top that. Yeah. So. What I want to say is this. Everyone, even us, has struggled with like with mental struggles, depression, thoughts of those kinds. Anxiety. Anxiety, everything, yeah. anything, stress, whatever you can think of. And I guess my greatest piece of advice for those listening that struggle with that is breathe. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. I love saying them. But whenever I have a, um, a friend that's struggling with anxiety and stress, I usually say, seek first then the kingdom of heaven and all of God's righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. The next verse, that's, it says, um, depends on the version. Uh, so then don't worry 
about tomorrow. For today has a, has enough uh, troubles of its own. Mm -hmm. but basically saying like, let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Like, don't, don't worry about it. Focus on today. And a big struggle with anxiety, anxiety can eat people alive. You know, I've struggled with it. I've had friends that struggle with it. And I guess the the biggest key for anxiety would just be like, we try to control something and anxiety can can sometimes be called, can be caused because we can't control something or something is out of our control. Yeah. Maybe it feels like it's growing too big and we feel like it, we can't control it. So it's freaking us out. And I love that calling to, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. And I just kind of have like a sense that like the Lord is calling us to just be like, Hey, don't worry about the next thing. Just focus and seek me right now. And I'll help you. The Lord gives pieces or passes all understanding. And anyways, yeah, I, I wanted to hit on all of these little things. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Um, Can and I, I want to get your guys' uh, thoughts on them. Like, do you guys have friends that have, uh, and obviously you probably do, but friends definitely <laughs> with yes, like depression, yeah. anxiety, those kinds of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say to them? Um, and how would you love them? Well, like, how do you, how would you guys love them? Well, man, I got, yeah, there's a lot of things going on in my head right now. Just thinking about what you're talking about. And if I could speak to just from a practical standpoint, uh, speak to anxiety, um, you know, just for somebody dealing with that, you know, and I've dealt with that just recently because of the mm. circumstances. Um, but so this is kind of fresh, like, and I've implemented some things that have been very helpful, but I would ask for anybody dealing with anxiety, like, first of all, look at your work schedule, right? Again, this is practical stuff. What's your work like? Mm. Are you, are you taking breaks? Are you taking vacation? Are you connecting with things outside of work? Um, are you spending time outside? Are you going for walks? Um, do you have a pet? Do you have a dog? We have, I have this little dog and this dude is, has got me into shape because I take him walk to, on a walk like pretty much every day mm -hmm. um, around my neighborhood. And it's refreshing. Like that little dog gets me outside because when he needs to go out, he's like right there sitting, like staring at me and he does not leave me alone. So he reminds me, right? Got to go outside, get some fresh air, get the body moving, get mobility going. Um, also, what are you eating? Because what we eat mm -hmm. really can influence how we feel mentally, emotionally, physically. Yeah. And so what are you putting in your body? Um, you know, take, take some time to reflect on that. Uh, and what are you also eating, uh, spiritually? That's good. What are you, what are you listening to? What are you watching? Because these things influence our thoughts. And if we're not feeding on scripture, if we're not feeding on like time and prayer, other things are going to take that place in our mind other things are going to take that place in our emotions and and that's going to influence us um so i would examine those things uh, as well in addition to um you know uh the the spiritual nature of anxiety and um uh i would say also something uh no i'm going to i'm going to wait I'm going to hold off. I have another thought, but um, we'll see if we circle back to it. But yeah, that's how that's how I would. Those are questions I would ask to somebody dealing with anxiety for sure. What was the initial question? I guess the, the initial question was just like, do you guys have friends that struggle? Or do you struggle? And or um, what is your advice for the listener? If they themselves or 
or somebody that, that they know is currently struggling with. Um, you can hit on any of those points. Those those thoughts of like unaliving themselves or um, depression, stress, anxiety. But more specifically, obviously, like the ones that feel like they're like out of control because sometimes sometimes we all have those things but they're like at a controlled level and we like know what to do but there's just people that like have that at an uncontrolled level and sometimes they like don't know like what to do they're like frozen Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i'm like my mind is racing with things um what's practical things that you would say yeah the the first thing i guess i'll just make points the first thing that i would say if i saw slash when i saw someone that i know and love or maybe someone that i don't really know uh, who i'm called to love going through anxiety or depression is to understand that you do not have all the answers like you are and you do not have a right to try and fix someone for sure but you can be present and you can ask really good questions and listen to them and help them to process that together you know i feel like there's so much of the world that throws out so many things to fix mental mental struggles whether that's media or striving for a goal or whatever it is i i also I also want to hit on the whole exercising in the health aspect of it too, because that I feel like when it comes to spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical wellness, all of those are connected. For sure. Like there's not, there's not one that's disconnected. Like you, you get healthy spiritually you'll have a better understanding of how you're supposed to look at your body, how you're supposed to take care of your body, what you're supposed to look at, what you're not supposed to look at, what you're supposed to eat and also not eat. Physically, I mean, same thing. Like you you don't exercise for two hours, work your butt off, and then go eat, eat McDonald's unless you've literally haven't eaten McDonald's forever, right? You just like, it's like things like that where you make the right decisions. and And even, you know, sometimes it's not, that easy to just go and make those right decisions but to be able to do that strive for that goal even thinking like i'm gonna go work out and get there and do that because some people have even anxiety with thinking about that like get into the gym so it's it's all about that one like the personal uh perspective preference like who is this person that i'm talking to for one and also what are what's the extremities of what they're going through and how how am I going to be able to help them with that instead of saying everybody has this generalized anxiety or depression or whatever it is. And there could be a group of people that have pretty similar experiences with that. But I think that when we generalize or make a leveled kind of all across the board, broad stroke of this is what anxiety is, or this was. This is how depression and anxiety hit people. That's where we start to go down the wrong path because we don't have one the knowledge to be able to say that. Because I think that there's so much to making that claim, and two, I think you don't have a complete understanding of mental struggles or healthiness in your kind of whole self and so that's kind of a little bit um a little bit all over the place practically again when it comes to people when it comes to myself because of the trauma that i've been through and the things that have i have experienced when it comes to anxiety and depression it has gotten a lot better because i've been surrounding myself with people that are really safe, that are really trustworthy, 
that aren't there to just try and fix me, but they're they're there to listen to me and to be able to be there if I need something. Like not necessarily like materialistic things, but being there as an ear, being there as, hey, dude, I'm I'm struggling, I'm going through this. Like, do you, you know, are you available to be able to come and hang out? Are you available to talk to me for a second? Prayer, prayer is huge. If you, you know, and this is hard too because you have people that could be listening that aren't believers. And it's like, how do you reach out to them? But I think like when it comes to, when, you, when it comes to if you're a believer, like prayer is number one too. Right, right in the get-go, I probably would pray and pray for that person that's struggling and stuff too. So, yeah. I mean, I could go on about this too because I'm pretty passionate about it. But I like what you said though that about like there's no general like fix-it strategy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. Everybody is dealing with different things that are – causing them to be stressed or anxious mm -hmm. you know yeah and, and um you know the medical world will will throw some sort of prescription at it like oh yeah yeah this that's take, huge will take care of it yeah but you know i've learned um i'm not going to do that personally yeah um and i've learned that my source of anxiety exists somewhere and I just have to, I have to figure that out. Why, why am I feeling this way? And what, mm -hmm. yeah. and everybody's got that. If you're exper experiencing anxiety, there's something there that's causing it. Right. Yep. Come on, bro. And, yeah. and so, you know, my suggestions and your suggestions are, um, obviously we're not medical professionals, but we're real people. As much as I want to be <laughs> when it comes to psychological stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yo, we're, we're people, yeah. we're real people with real problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to approach these things in ways that, that work for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everybody needs to have that same approach. What's going to work for you? Um, and that's why I threw out and you threw out just a list of things that, um, you know, we found has helped us. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you hit on something else, too, a little bit. Um, that I think is helpful as well, um, which is uh, hanging out with other people. Like, that's essential. And sometimes we, you know, let's say, let's say I am a believer at, at a church and I don't get invited to things mm. like, or I don't know how to get connected um, to activities. But here I am on social media and I'm seeing all, all these other people at my church are hanging out and they're doing stuff like, how come I'm not, how come I'm not there? How come not, I'm not invited? What do you guys say to somebody like that mm. um, who's in that position? I think one is like, who are you hanging out with people? Like, are you reaching out to people yourself? Yeah. What were you going to say? You had something. Um, so you're saying like, I'm at a church and I see that everybody at church is doing stuff together, but they're not inviting me kind of thing. Kind of. Yeah. Because I think that that is essential to our well being as believers and as humans, like, relationships are important right and having healthy relationships can help alleviate certain aspects of of things in our life that are causing depression or causing anxiety so it's important to be connected to other people right so mm. yeah yeah um i guess there's a couple of things but like what i'll say three things one thing even when you are struggling, helping somebody else is always good for you mm -hmm. because it can help you. I know when I've struggled with depression, if somebody else, if I see them, if I see that they're really struggling, I'm actually kind of more drawn to that person because it kind of looks like they're kind of my vibe at the moment, you know? So when you go up and talk to them, 
it's like hey like how are you and then you're like or they're like huh not good bad and you're like aha my person you know because you're also going through that um it can be easier for you because first of all if you're going through that you may not feel like helping that person right now but it's so nice going up to somebody and knowing that somebody can actually understand you yeah um so that would be my first recommendation even if you don't want to go talk to those people that you're like, oh, they're like preppy or like whatever, that you don't, that if you don't want to go like, look, go talk to them, at least go look for somebody in general and you'll find somebody. Even if it's the other person that you feel like might be kind of going through what you're going through. Um, and if, and I'll say it's really helpful to have um, somebody to help. Um, the other person, the other thing, I guess. Um, if you go to a church and they're not inviting you to stuff, to be honest, go and talk to the pastor and say, Hey, um, is there any Bible study that I can go to? You don't, you don't have to like worry about those people specifically that are posting stuff. I would just recommend <coughs> going up to like the pastor and ask him, Hey, are there any Bible studies that I could join? Instead of focusing on those people, because something that I realize is just because I, a group of people from the church seems to be more recognizable, that doesn't make up the whole church, probably. Hmm. The church is made up by so many people. There's like the church that, that I go to, that we go to, has so many people, but I feel like the face of the church that we go to is made up by maybe like 50 recognizable people. Um, when the church itself probably has like three or four, maybe 500 people that go to it. And mm. I can sometimes judge the church by those 30, maybe 20, 30, 40 people that I see. Um, I mean, we all do it. I've done it. Um, but the church is so much more than just those people that are maybe being mean or whatever. And also, a lot of those people that aren't, like in the front that are like those 30, 40, 50 people that I'm talking about. It could just be like five people. Um, like a lot of people in the background, they need friends too. <laughs> and maybe they're kind of thinking the same thing that you're thinking, man, those people in the, in the front, they're not inviting me to anything, but guess what? There's actually way more people in the back that are there with you and they're kind of looking for something. So something I would recommend is just being like, Hey, go up to the pastor and ask her. There's like a Bible study. And if there isn't, even if you don't feel like it, it might be helpful to start something. Um, not might be. It always is. It's always helpful to do stuff when you are down. Um, even start something. Um, if you feel like you're not in the right mental state, then maybe I would hold off on that. And I would just go talk to the pastor and join something. And you'll find somebody. You'll always find people. Um, and the third one, just to finish it off. Um this is kind of just in general. Like if you're struggling, but you're also kind of like seeing other people hang out at the church. Um, and you're like, man, there's, there's like, life is so bland. There's nothing to do. Um, nobody invites you to stuff. I would just say this. This is really important. I actually apply, I try to apply this to my life all the time. Add something. Add something to do in your life. Mm. Right? Put something in your life that you can look forward to. Anything. It can be one year ahead, two months ahead, one week ahead. Because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like, let's just say you, the listener. If you, let's just say, insert, insert dream country, dream vacation. If you added that vacation or that date or whatever, one month from now. It's set up one day, two days, three days, however long, a week, right? Until that day, you can be struggling with something. Mm -hmm. But you're always going to be like, man, this week sucks. But hey, in a month, I'm going to be at Answer Dream Vacation, right? And it helps you get through stuff. Yeah. I've learned that. Um, spiritually, the most important one that I 
that I think that I um, have been trying to apply to my life is what is the ultimate vacation spot for a Christian? It's not just a vacation spot. It's an eternal spot. And it's to be with Jesus. And the ultimate, like, mindset fixer for me is like, man, I am struggling. But that day is coming soon when I'm going to be with Jesus. And spiritually, that is so helpful for me. Physically, like, it, cause let's just say that works, but maybe, oh, that was so deep. But it only works for, like, a week. In the first week you hear it, right? Well, then start setting up stuff, like, actually, um, plan stuff. Um, a week a week or two from now, just be like, hey, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to invite this person. I might bring my Bible out there. Maybe a guitar. Play some worship. Don't make it, if it's too stressful to do too much, just make it simple. I'm going to go fishing out this river. I'm going to go look for agates at that river. I'm going to go look for cool rocks. Something, you know. Go do something. Maybe by yourself, even with a friend. And, yeah, super helpful. Um, I think if I, were to, if I were to hear about somebody that isn't getting invited to certain events, um, like if, if they were here, if they've been here for a while and they're not getting invited and they've been going to the church for a little bit and they know the community, um, I would definitely ask, like, why aren't they getting invited? And challenge that they would get invited because I think that as a body of Christ, like we need to be aware of that completely. I don't, I think that if we're not doing our due diligence on making people feel like they belong or experience that community, like if we're not doing that, then I don't really think that we're following Jesus in the way that we're supposed to completely because Jesus and how we were called to, you know, called to include and be generous with our time and generous with our space for people. Like we, we, we need to make those decisions on, on really inviting those people around. I mean, that's kind of my, my two cents on that. Um, but I would also say like, if somebody's having a hard time trying to have friends or be, be in community, I would encourage them to pray about the friends that they want to be around. Like who, who, one, who are you? Like who, what kind of person are you? Are you someone that is just an extrovert and loves to be around people? Then you can get along with a lot of people or are you an introvert where you are just around people and there are just certain people that kind of fill you up. You got to know who you are. I mean, it's like if you just blindly go into a relationship or a friendship that you don't necessarily want to be in, but it's like, I don't have any other friends. I'm just going to do this one thing. Like, I'm just going to be in this relationship. Like, that's cool if there's, this is like a brother in Christ situation. But there's also that the questions you get to ask, like, is this something that is going to lead me closer to Jesus? Or is this something that's going to be, you know, is this someone that going to be that they're going to be like, holding me accountable, loving me, you know, in a way that I need? Are they going to be pursuing me in this friendship? Are they going to be someone that I can trust? That Those sorts of things is some, something that you kind of have to work on on your own, pray about. Um, anybody could get any friend but i think it really takes someone who is emotionally aware and spiritually aware to be able to say i need these types of friends in my life i don't think we're supposed to have just a ton of friends i think i think it's better to have a close-knit tight group of friends to be able to have the growth in jesus that we can have or be challenged in the way that we're supposed to it's like being aware of your heart. Like what, like one, what does your heart need? I don't know. I think it just takes a very, you know, it takes a good amount of time to be able to find some people that you, you click with, that you're good friends with. Like when we, when me and Tiana came here, the kind of a, a story, like we didn't know anybody. And this town, Newport has 
so many families and generations that have been around for a while. They're just tight knit. Like my, I graduated with this person. My kids graduated with this person. Like in the church sense, it's it's not crazy different. I think there is an amazing community, but it was hard to be able to try to find that group. One thing that helped us, like Kevin said, like we would look forward to something, me and Tiana, like the one thing that we looked forward to was CrossFit. And that helped us to be able to gain community in some some sense. Um, but even then, like it was that, that tight knit group that was going to CrossFit and also went to church together and also did Easter together and also did like, like all these different types of things served at the church together. And so that was hard for us because we were like, how are we going to be able to get into a group that we need? And then God, like, we were just praying like, God, we just need people. We just need people in our life. People that we, that would, you know, not necessarily be easy to get along with, but people that we could grow with and actually like, build good healthy relationship with healthy being like that keyword and he made he just opened doors made made ways for us and that has been you know i mean with us three it's like that relationship that we all have is amazing and i think it was just by god alone creating that space and creating that door to be opened so that we can get along and be together and grow together and challenge one another and so you just really have to keep trusting you you said something though that is imperative, right? You recognized a need, right? Mm -hmm. That that might not like some people might uh, not realize that, you know. Mm. So that's where you got to start. You you have to recognize that there is a need. That you need um, other people in your life. Um, I'm speaking as a you know pretty solid introvert. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you got to recognize that you need people to grow and to be challenged and to be accountable to and and to laugh with. Um, and I keep thinking about I keep thinking about just just the other day. Um, last night when we all hung out, playing some games, eating together. And at the end of the night, like, did anybody go home like feeling horrible? I don't think so. No, right? I did right too much pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was so much fun. But we all felt good. Yeah. Why? Because like we had fun together. You know, we all love each other. We all love hanging out. We laughed. We made fun of each other. You know, and all in good fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, but my thought earlier, and I've experienced this, and my wife and I have done this before. When we, when we've had planned gatherings of having people over to our house that sometimes we'll invite somebody, just somebody that, that we might think of that'll come to mind that the Lord might bring to our minds to come into that space with us mm. and to come into a space with a close knit group of friends um, so that they, they can be there and experience that and get, and get loved on, right. And laugh and and talk with um and that that my goodness like how impactful can that be to somebody mm -hmm. who's struggling with feeling lonely or feeling depressed or feeling like they're not invited to things or whatever right somebody who's struggling with community um that makes all mm -hmm. that makes a big difference yeah um i can think of a friend of mine now who is also a friend of Kevin's and at some point down the road you know when Kevin or you know in, in the past when Kevin came over to our house I can remember him saying hey is it is it cool if I uh you know invite this person over you know mm. and I'm like yeah totally you know and we and here we are today like I'm good friends with this guy because you know Kevin felt that in the past just invite him over to hang out and he comes and hangs out and here we are today like you know so those, those things make a difference mm. um, in people's lives. So I would say for that, you know, to the believer uh, who has been walking with the Lord for a while, like, you know, activate that part of your life where you're 
uh, breaking bread with people. You're inviting them into your home. You're hanging out. You're laughing. You're eating, having a meal together. Um, you know, pray about somebody that the Lord can bring to, to your attention that might need that sort of uh, experience, mm -hmm. you know. And, and gu guaranteed it'll produce fruit. Yeah. yeah, for sure. We were kind of just talking about a bunch of little different topics today in this podcast. But if you do, like as a listener, um, feel um, like you're struggling and it's really hard, you can also always um, find us. Um, mm hmm I uh, um welcome home prayer room. Just one word. I'm on Instagram. You can message us. Um mm -hmm. and the little profile picture is just like a white background. Um, but it's a picture of like the prodigal son. Like just like they're hugging the father and the son. Um and you can just message it. Um and we'll gladly um pray for you. You can also um find my personal um instagram and message me there it's big love kev um b-i-g-l-o-v-e -E, and then just k-e-v um on instagram and you can just message me and i will gladly talk to you um and yeah you're not a burden mm -hmm. god loves you and actually before we end this. I actually wanted to share these really quick. But these are some verses um, uh, for three things. If you're dealing with fear, depression, or anxiety. So here's a couple Here's a couple of verses for fear. To combat fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Deuteronomy 31.8 He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Isaiah 43.1 Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm -hmm. Then here's the one just for depression. Um, Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Psalm 42, 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. 2 Corinthians 1, uh, 3 to 4. Praise be to God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. It's beautiful. Psalm 40, 1, uh, 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of a slimy pit, out of mud and mire, and he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. And then just the last one uh, uh, to combat anxiety, and it's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. John 14, 27. It's the last one. 
Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset and do not be afraid. With that, I just want to pray over us and then Domingo and John can pray if, if they feel led to. Father God, I just want to pray over this um, just serious issue. Um, it's something that nobody in this world is free from. We all struggle with or have struggled with depression or anxiety or stress or any of these um, thoughts, Lord. Um, and to think and to have these thoughts doesn't mean that you are abnormal um, because we all struggle with them. Um, but Lord, you are the God of hope. You are the God that gives us a purpose. Lord, I just pray right now that for us and for the listeners, I pray, Lord, that you just come into our hearts, Lord, that you come into our souls and that you give us a, that purpose to live. That you teach us, Lord, where to go to when we feel like we're lost. Lord, that you put us on a firm foundation when, we're fe when we feel like we're stuck in the mud. Lord Jesus, I just pray for the for the listener. I pray in Jesus' name that you put a hedge of protection over them, Lord. And I, pray, I just pray that any bond, uh, any bondage, any chains of depression and anxiety um, and stress and uh, suicidal thoughts, all of these things in Jesus' name, Lord, I just pray that they break at, at the sound of your name, Lord. All these chains, they have no room, Lord. And I don't just want to say that and then not say to go and seek uh, help from some friends lord i want to pray that these chains be broken but lord i also pray that if you are a person that you don't feel like you're maybe relate to this and you feel like maybe you're freed from these things right now i just pray that you feel it in your heart to maybe go and find a friend that you have that is struggling with these things lord i just pray that you speak to that person that feels like maybe they're fine right now go and find somebody that needs to feel the love of jesus go and find somebody that maybe feels like that girl in that video that we talked about earlier, that I feel like I don't exist and I just I just want to feel like I exist. Lord, I just pray that you uh, use those people. Lord, I just pray that, again, for the listener that is struggling with those things, that there is a hope and there is a future and God is right there with you and he loves you. There's nothing that you struggle with that the Lord hasn't seen already in your life. And guess what? The Lord has so much more planned for you. So I just pray, um, Lord, that you bless the person listening to this. You, person listening to this. I love you and the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you more than I could ever love you. And he has a hope and a future for you. Not plans to harm you, but to prosper you. And Lord, we just pray this and in your mighty name, Lord, we love you. Amen. You just listened to Welcome Home Podcast. For more information or content, please visit our Instagram, Welcome Home Prayer Room. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.